Hey there guys, Grievalorn here, and today I'm going to do a video on the 10 best cards to pull for a Battle Pack Sealed Play. Now these aren't in any specific order, these aren't all just super broken cards, save for probably one, but these are just good cards that you want to get if you're doing any kind of sealed play. For example, in my area we've been doing a league with Battle Pack where we get cards and we can buy packs and whatnot, and these 10 cards I feel are one of the strongest factors in how you would make your deck is can you get some of these cards that would really help contribute towards your overall not quite your overall deck theme but just overall deck power and performance just having answers to different situations is what I'm finding is most important with Battle Pack Sealed Play and these will give you answers if you're ever stuck in certain situations so to start off we have Jinzo it's a level 6 dark machine uh, it's 2400 attack, 1500 defense, and its effect is Trap cards and their effects cannot be activated. The effects of all face-up trap cards on the field are negated. So this guy, oldie, really good card. Basically, once you get him out on the field, if your opponents drew or opened a lot of trap cards in their sealed play, this will effectively make any of those cards dead. Which is really what you want to do with this, is you want to limit the usefulness of your opponent's cards while getting the most out of yours. So if you pull a Jinzo, you probably wouldn't be using very many trap cards or use them when you have trap cards on the field. So the next card, a Treeborn Frog. It's a water level one uh, aqua type monster, 100 attack, 100 defense. The effect is, during your standby phase, if this card is in your graveyard and you do not control a face up Treeborn Frog, you can special summon this card. You must control no spell or trap cards to activate and to resolve this effect. So with this, it actually very, pairs very, very well with the Jinzo before, because with Jinzo you may not want to use that many spells and traps, or at least ones that are quick play, so you can get rid of them before Shreeborn would activate. So what makes this guy great is, with the sealed play, you want to tribute summon a lot. And with that, Treeborn Frog is pretty much unlimited tribute fodder. Um, you can go into any of the Monarchs, you can go into any of the 5 to 6 stars, Scholar Treat of Lightning, Jinzo. It just gives you access to those higher starred monsters when people may have to set a card or two and wait a turn, hopefully that, hoping that that card doesn't get destroyed by the time their next turn comes around so they can tribute out for a monster. And with Treeborn Frog, you don't have to worry about if he dies because he'll just come back from your graveyard during your standby and you'll be able to continue off with your combos from there. So, very powerful card. If a person pulls one or even two of these, I highly recommend trying to go a route with this and any other five or six stars because you'll have so much easy access to Treeborn with Black Witch of the Black Force being in the set to be a searcher. Which, granted, Witch of the Black Force might be able to search out better things, but overall you might want to be go for, going for cards like Treeborn and whatnot. So next, we have Gore's Emissary of Darkness. As a Dark Fiend, level 7, 2700 attack, 2500 defense. Its effect is, when you take damage from a card your opponent controls, you can special summon this card from your hand. You must control no cards to activate and to resolve its effect. When special summon this way, activate the appropriate effect based on the type of damage. Battle damage, special summon 1 Emissary of Darkness token, fairy type, light, level 7, attack question mark, defense question mark. Its attack and defense are equal to the da battle damage you took. Effect damage, inflict the damage your to your opponent equal to the amount of damage you took. So basically, this guy also combos very well with having like a Jinzo or a Treeborn because if you don't control anything and take damage, you can immediately turn the tide with a 2700 beater on the field as well as a token with the same attack and defense. And as I've been finding a lot in sealed play, it's very hard to get over anything about 2600 being Gem Knight Pearl, the Xyz monster's attack of 26, so with him at 27, there's not a lot of cards that can get over it. I think there may not even be any, say for like Obelisk or the White Blizzard Dragon, which both require a lot to set up to and just really aren't that good. So this, I feel, is a great card to pull in sealed play, especially if you do get like a, a way you don't have a lot of spells and traps, which you won't with how sealed play works. So overall, very good card to pull, very effective in this sealed play, and can turn the tides very, 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 very towards your favor. And can pull the tides quite towards your favor if you're able to put this guy down afterwards. 
So next we have Rise of the Storm Monarch, and this also encompasses any of the Monarchs. I just chose Ryza because I think he's a little more utility than the other two. Um, I believe the other two being Zaborg. Uh, there's actually three other ones, Zaborg, Mobius, and Caius. Caius probably being the one people choose the most, but I think Ryza is, again, the more utility one. So, he's a Wind Winged Beast, 6 star, 2400, 1000 defense. When this card is tribute summoned, target one card on the field, return that target to the top of the deck. Now the reason I like this one more is because tribute summoning is a big important factor with sealed play. With Ryza, when you get him out, you can return a monster that they had to tribute summon for and effectively shut them down for maybe another turn or so to have to build up the field presence that's required to get back that tribute. Especially if they had to summon something that required two or so tributes. In that case, you can just constantly keep poking them down until they can't. They just can't regain the field presence afterwards if they lost one of their big boss monsters. So, and that goes kind of the same with the other monarchs. Just Mobius, the two spell and traps. Eh, the spell and traps in the set aren't that great. Granted, there are a few really good ones, but a lot of the ones you're going to be using are just normal spells and a few traps that maybe are going to be activated and not set a lot. So. Mobius is probably the weaker one. Caius is obvious to get that thousand damage, if possible, to win the game, as well as the remove from play of a card. And then Zaborg is great as well because it's a five star, 2400, and you can destroy a monster when he's summoned. So he kind of has the same effect as Ryza, but with cards such as Call of the Haunted and uh, what's the return from not return from the different dimension. Uh, the one that's like it. Um, Premature Burial. With that, the people can bring their big boss monsters back if it's been destroyed. So with Ryza, it disrupts their big plays that they've been trying to go for. Next we have Trigodia. I think one of the better cards in this set that you could pull for a sealed play. Now what it is, it's a Dark Fiend 10 star, question mark attack, question mark defense, and its effect is, when you take battle damage, you can special summon this card from your hand. This card gains 600 attack and defense for each card in your hand. Once per turn, you can send one monster from your hand to the graveyard to target one face-up monster your opponent controls with the same level as the sent monster. Take control of that target. Once per turn, you can target one monster in your graveyard. This card's level becomes the same as that target's until the end phase. Now what makes this card so great in this set is, not only can it stop you from being OTK'd, if a person does get OTK potential, or just by taking a lot of battle damage, he can also take your opponent's monsters, you just have to have the same level. Which is kind of common in the battle pack because a lot of the monsters are 3 to 4 stars, as well as the tribute monsters being 6 star. So you will have access to be able to steal your opponent's monsters as well. And especially if you can steal a 5 star by ditching a 5 star, copy the 5 star with Trigodia, and you can overlay into an Injury Soterius if you pulled either. Now, and that's one of the bigger things about this guy is his being able to manipulate his own levels, which is really good in this set because some of the XCs are really good. For example, Gem Knight Pearl, unaffected by Fiendish Chain, which is kind of what people are wanting to go for in their spell and trap lineup if they pull any. So with the with Gem Knight Pearl not being an effect monster, can't be hit by Fiendish Chain, making it useless. So Jacody can help you go into your three or four stars very effectively one of my favorite cards in the set. As well, he could be a giant beater with a 600 attack and defense for each card. If you have a minimum of 5 cards, he's already a 3,000-3,000 beater that people probably can't get over. So the next card I want to look at is Scapegoat. It's a quick play spell card, and when activated, special summon 4 sheep tokens, beast type earth, level 1, attack 0, defense 0, in defense position. These tokens cannot be attributed for a tribute summon. You cannot summon other monsters to turn you activate this effect, but you can set. Now, what this means is, if you're in a tough situation and your opponent has bigger field presence than you are, activating the scapegoat could help let you stall out a bit to draw into any cards that can help you get out of the situation. Granted, these guys can't be attributed for a tribute summon, but they still just provide a block against any kind of monsters that could be coming at you. So I like this card in just its utility to answer your opponent. Like if your opponent has three big beaters, you can just be like, scapegoat and stop it. So the next card I want to look at is You Know We Stand. It's a normal equips card spell. The equipped monster gains 800 attack and defense for each face of monster you control. So what this does is gives you an immediate 800 boost to one of your monsters. 
And if you combine this with the card I showed before, Scapegoat, that's an immediate 3200 attack increase. That's not a small number. That'll pretty much get over anything, even Obelisk, if the monster is at least a 1900 beat stick. Like something like Botanical Lion, have that on the field, his attack becomes 1900, equip this, his attack is now 4100 and can get over Obelisk. That's impressive. So I think it's a pretty good card in this set. It was also kind of hard to get a hold of before this, so it was a pretty good reprint. But just the ability to be 1800 beat stick for each monster you control, especially if you're in a dire situation, it's a great way to answer some of your opponent's bigger monsters. Next we have Ring of Destruction. This is the only banned card I have on this list, and for very good reason. This is probably one of my favorite of all the cards that they reprinted that were banned, because it's target one face a monster on the field, destroy that target. And if you do, inflict damage to both players equal to that target's attack. So not only does this let you spot remove your opponent's big monsters, this will also allow you to do damage to both you and, op and your opponent. And if you're in the lead of life points, that 2400 attack monster, now just became 2400 life points, you and your opponent both lose, but you still got the edge. Let's say that you had your opponent had like 1600 life points left, you still had like 4000, but they got all their big monsters out and you can't do anything. Well with Ring of Destruction that would be like bam, you can immediately recover from that and win depending on what monster you're able to destroy with it. So it's a really good card in this set, it's won me so many games, it, it's just stupid how good this card is. Next we have Black Wings of Pharaoh's Elite. It's a dark winged beast, 4 star, 600 attack, 1000 defense. The effect is, if this card is in your graveyard, you can return one face of card you control to the hand. Special summon this card from the graveyard, and if you do, take 400 damage. Each player can only use the effect of Black Wings of Pharaoh's blah 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 blah. So the reason I have this card in this list is because his utility is fantastic in sealed play. Not only does he allow you to get him into the graveyard for discard outlets for any kind of cards, he allows you to go easily into rank 4 Xyz, as well as the fact is if you use Premature Burial, you can play Premature Burial, bounce it back to your hand, not killing the monster it's equipped to, and then bring out Black Wings of Ferals, and then use Premature Burial again to get a bigger monster out, all for the cost of only 1200 life points, which is not a bad deal considering if you have any of your big monsters in the graveyard that you now bring it back out with your reusable Premature Burial. So this card gives so much good utility in this set, and I really think this is one of the better cards that you can pull if you're doing any kind of sealed play. And finally, we have Cyber Dragon. It's a light machine, 5 star, 2000 attack, 600 defense, and the effect is if your opponent controls a monster, you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. Now, what he does is he allows you to easily get tribute fodder, just like what Treeborn Frog does. However, it comes along with a 2100 body beater. So, if your opponent's got, like, say it's first turn, they play some weak monster, you can bring out Cyber Dragon and start poking over and controlling the start of the game until your opponent gets anything bigger, and then you can just sack Cyber Dragon for one of your bigger monsters. So, he's a great utility card in the fact that you can just bring him down so easily, and because he has that 2100 body, it's not easy for your opponent to get over with how most of the monsters are in this set. So, that's the the 10 cards I feel that are some of the best ones to pull for sealed play. Let me know what you think down in the comments below on what cards you feel are really good in this set. So, remember, it's not the size of your deck that matters, it's what you put in it.